My name is Stretto. Welcome to episode 5 of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, Underthrown. On episode 2 of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, we explored the role of the artist as soothsayer. Why do so many works of art end up being accurate predictions of the future? On this episode of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, we'll unravel some of the imagery and themes in Storyboard of a Dream, a multimedia work of art that predicted a series of encounters with unexplained anomalous phenomena in the skies above my neighborhood, objects we used to call UFOs. Even before my first sighting on February 25th, 2021, I found myself inserting flying discs into the first row of Storyboard of a Dream. It was as if there was something on the edge of my subconscious, something I had to get out. The message within the medium of that first encounter expanded, and I became obsessed with subjects and issues I had previously never held an interest in. Technology, clean energy, and the work of Nikola Tesla occupied my thoughts. My mind was connecting the dots, saturated with new information, and so I began writing essays to accompany the imagery I was channeling. This collection of essays forms the manuscript for the book version of Storyboard of a Dream. Many of the windows in Storyboard of a Dream are interconnected, so in order to understand the full meaning of Underthrown, it helps to see it within the context of Tesla and the all-knowing eye. I have paired Underthrown with an essay about the suppression of Nikola Tesla's work. It is also called Underthrown. On January 7, 1943, the body of 86-year-old inventor Nikola Tesla was discovered by a maid in the Hotel New Yorker in Manhattan. In keeping with his obsession with the number three, the room number was 3327 and was located on the 33rd floor. In the book Tesla, Wizard at War, The Genius, The Particle Beam Weapon, and The Pursuit of Power, Tesla authority Mark J. Seifert details the events surrounding Tesla's death and the confiscation of his papers. When Tesla died, his nephew, Yugoslavian ambassador Sava N. Kosanovich, was notified immediately and was one of the first to arrive at Tesla's underthrone. Kosanovich removed some photos from Tesla's safe, but curiously left behind Tesla's papers. Also left behind were several keys to safe deposit boxes from other New York hotels, including one for a box at the Hotel Governor Clinton, located across from Penn Station. The contents of this box were alleged to have contained plans for a particle beam weapon, what Tesla termed a death beam, capable of obliterating planes, tanks, and cities from hundreds of miles away. Dr. Vannevar Bush, whose name would later be associated with the infamous Majestic 12 UFO Research Group, notified FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. Despite the fact that Tesla was a naturalized U.S. citizen, Hoover had Walter Gorsuch, head of the Office of Alien Property, or OAP, to the Hotel New Yorker to seize the estate. A declassified memo to Hoover, dated January 12, 1943, details the seizure of Tesla's papers and two truckloads of property. Dr. Bush enlisted John G. Trump, director of MIT's High Voltage Research Laboratory and uncle of former President Donald Trump, to compile a dossier on what Tesla was working on before he died. Trump's official response to Vannevar Bush was that Tesla's last 15 years were merely speculative, philosophical, and somewhat promotional, but did not include new, sound, workable principles or methods for realizing such results. But exhibits F and Q of the Trump report mention a missing Tesla particle beam application written in 1937. The application didn't surface until the first of seven biennial conferences on Tesla held in Colorado Springs and attended by Mark Seifer in the summer of 1984. The lost application contained specific information on how the particle beam functioned, which contradicts Trump's assessment. Further proof that John Trump's report was not forthcoming is evidenced by the continued interest other branches of the government had in this device after the report was written. In documents released under the Freedom of Information Act, the Air Force was still restricting access to these exhibits as recently as 1992. Tesla had been a lifelong proponent of getting off fossil fuels and using the powers of the Earth to provide limitless, clean energy. His idea was to harness the wheelwork of nature, as he put it. 
Tesla's plans for a worldwide wireless energy distribution system utilized electricity injected into the ground at just the right frequency to produce standing waves. These waves could then be accessed by anyone, anywhere, as clean energy. With a $150,000 investment from financier J.P. Morgan, Tesla built Wardenclyffe Tower on Long Island, near the town of Shoreham. Standing at nearly 200 feet, it extended 120 feet below the ground and had several tunnels emanating out laterally. Many of the other features of the underground portion of the tower were kept secret. Tesla claimed that his invention worked, but we shall never know for certain. On July 14, 1903, investor J.P. Morgan wrote to Tesla, who by that time was mired in debt, that he was pulling the plug on the project. Wardenclyffe Tower was abandoned in 1906 and demolished on July 4, 1917. Eight years after Nikola Tesla's death in September of 1951, his estate was finally released by the U.S. government and returned to Krasanovich in Belgrade. The FBI's inventory for Tesla's estate had listed 80 trunks filled with papers and equipment. Only 60 trunks were returned. Thanks for tuning in to Episode 5 of Pink Elephant Foxtrot. Music was by Tom Young. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For information on how to order fine art prints of any of my UAP, Apparition City, or Storyboard of a Dream images, or if you would like to become a sponsor of the show, please get in touch. Stretto at PinkElephantFoxtrot.com Coming up on Episode 6 of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, Beacon. Can the human experience, with all its sorrows and joys, be expressed in a single piece of instrumental music? It is difficult to know what Johann Sebastian Bach was feeling or thinking when he wrote The Chacon, a 20-minute set of variations for solo violin. It continues to serve as a beacon, and it is one we need to face now more than ever on the next Pink Elephant Foxtrot. <laughs>